Oh, Alright guys, welcome to a uh, another U150 deck analysis. Today we're going to be going over uh, the Lost World deck in U150. Now there's a, I feel like there's a couple ways to play U, um, the Lost World deck in U150, and I don't think I'm playing it necessarily the most optimal way ever. So just bear in mind that this list is not exactly flushed out, and probably you probably could think about it just a little bit more. But I guess you know what Lost World does. Uh, one, uh, if your opponent gets uh, six um, Pokemon in their lost zone, you can choose to win the game as long as you get this out. Now normally this strategy is not very great because your opponent is trying to knock out six Pokemon where you're just trying to get six into the lost world somehow. But since you won 50 plays with eight prizes, you get a little extra time to get those six into um, the lost zone. You also have uh, uh, better support than the lost world deck did uh, when it was out, and that's the reason it never really succe uh, succeeded. So between those two support, the, all the support that you get, and the eight prizes, Lost World's actually not the worst deck. Uh, so we're going to go over my build of it today. Like I said, this build's probably not optimized. Um, in U150, it's, it's you know, uh, this this build is completed, just not optimized, if that makes sense. Like, it's still going to be good. But if you're looking to make changes off it, I would. Because you definitely can. Um, so yeah, Lost World definitely... Um, a fun concept to do. That's the other thing. It's like really, really fun. So I'm gonna leave that down there. But uh, like I was gonna go over the Pokemon first. We're gonna start off with the support Pokemon uh, just to get them out of the way. You play your four big buddies here and your six one-one evolutions that I put in every single deck. Um, these right here are definitely. I mean, like, you're, like. What is the what's the word I'm working for? I don't know what the word I'm working for is, but hey. Uh, Support Pokemon, play them. This is, they're in every deck. They're in most every deck, and they work well here. Uh, Spiritum, especially in this deck, item it gets a little bit extra um, power with the item lock because you're trying to slow your opponent down to your speed so that you can control them. This is sort of a controlly deck. Um, it's not built with a whole bunch of control, but you can build it with a whole bunch of control. Uh, so our main line is going to be this two one one uh, Gengar line. Now, if you don't know what this Gengar does, if he's in the active and he takes a knockout, your opponent's Pokemon goes to the Lost Zone. Now, the only attack he has is place four damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's the only one that does damage, so it's, you're not going to be knocking out a whole lot of Pokemon. Uh, you could do some cool shenanigans with, like, Celebi or Shrine of Memories where you start taking knockouts with this guy, but that's not the real reason we use him. We use him for Hurl into Darkness. Uh, you can look at your opponent's hand, and for each Psychic Energy attached to Gengar, you take a Pokemon you find there and put it into the Lost World. Uh, a Lost Zone, sorry. Uh, so, to, you know, if you have three energies on it, you do it twice successfully, you win the game. Granted, that's probably never going to happen, but the whole idea behind this is you're going to be focusing uh, on playing Gengar. Now, the reason that it's a weird, like, 2 one, one line is because I couldn't, like, both these Ghastlies are good. Uh, this one can lock your opponent out of uh, playing items, and this one's got free retreat, full 50 HP. Oh, and no weakness, too. Uh, so that's why you play both of these. Uh, but you only play one Haunters because when this Haunters on the bench, they're never going to Lysander or um, Gust of Wind kill it. Because what its ability is, is uh, flip, if it gets knocked out, you flip a coin of heads, you're not knocked out, and you go down to 10 HP. Um, so, you play one of these just so you can always have a Ghastly on the bench. You bench both of them. If they decide to Lysander kill one of them, you evolve, and then they're going to be like, oh, I'm not going to bother taking that Haunter. So that's the reason I like the 2-1 here. You could, if you wanted to, you could go 2-2. Two, two. That way your Rescue Scarf and your Rescue Energy activate better on this guy. Um, but he's not central. He is like the main attacker, but he's not central. So I'm fine with the 2-1-1 one, one line for space. Um, and then the Gengar. So we're going to keep in mind with the Gengar. Now, we play a lot of cards that will put, um, a put uh, Pokemon into their hand uh, somehow, some way. So the most common one that you're going to see is Crawdon EX. Uh, from way back when. Chrono EX is if your opponent has four more bench Pokemon, you may choose one of them and return them all to their hand. The big key point of that one is that you get to choose what card goes back to their hand. So you can choose their Claydol and hurl both parts of their Claydol. You can pick their main attacker that's on the bench and, and uh, splash back it into their hand and then hurl it into darkness. So you get to kind of control and choose what goes into the Lost World if you have this combo out. You know, that's pretty good. And these are the only two EXs. This is a natural EX, Chrono EX, and then this one that gets printed. So these are the only two EXs in the deck. Um, that's also really helpful in terms of like price trading because you want them to take the full eight knockouts. They're probably going to knock out eight Gengar at least once. This one's never going to get Lysander killed. 
generally speaking. But yeah, that's the main combo here. These two cards work really well in tandem together for you to pick off what's ever on their bench. Um, having them be limited to a three bench size is pretty tricky for them to come back with. Uh, if you look ahead here, the other uh, card is Palkia. Now, if you don't have the Crawdon Gengar combo, Palkia a G level X works just well. Um, any player has four more with bench Pokemon chooses three of them, the other ones get sent to the lost zone. So if they don't know what this is doing, and they play like Skyfield and throw their bench up, you can Palkia them, and while they get to choose, you're sending at least four to the um, lost zone. Uh, so yeah, there's two ways that they have to play around the benching. One of them, you have to get the combo, like this combo over here, you have to, you get to choose what goes to the Lost World. This combo, they get to choose what goes to the Lost World, but it's much easier to set up because it's literally just the level X line here. Uh, it's more stuff that sends up to the Lost World. You have Mime Jr. Uh, this is Sleepy Lost. What it does is it takes the top card of your uh, opponent's deck and puts it straight to the Lost Zone. And uh, the reason that that's good is because you can use it in combination with the Slow King, which rearranges the top three cards of their deck. I just opened the window, that's why I got lighter in here, if you were curious. Uh, so you can rearrange their top three, and find a Pokemon there, put it to the top, and then Lost zone it away. It's a really easy way to get the 1-1 one, one combo out, and this is what you want to do in the early game, or if you're desperation in the late game. The other thing that Sloking helps with is it um, it helps kind of control them. If you ever, you know, when you don't have Mime Jr., you can control their top decks, and that can be bit if they st big if they start drawing dead. Um, so these two work really well in combo together as well. It's just a lot of combos this deck is. Um, and that's the kind of the, the weird part of this, I guess, is that you have to get uh, a combo out at the same time so your opponent can kind of predict it. And they can also kind of play around it, too. Um, they, if they limit their bench size, keep Pokemon in their discard or their hand or that sort of thing, um, they can definitely play around you. Um, but anyways, since they are playing around you, we do play a lot of Mysterious uh, Fossils. Uh, and I was originally playing this because... Um, it's a good way to like buffer the, their attacks. Like they have to waste a turn attacking into this, and they don't get to take a prize, which is fantastic. Uh, I also play Clefairy Doll and Robosub for the same reason. But since we play the Mysterious Fossils that allow and the Buried Fossil, it allows us to play this Omastar. And what this Omastar does is when you evolve it, it de-evolves all of your opponent's Pokemon. So that's good for two things. Uh, thing number one, if your Gengar's in the active and you de-evolve them and they die for some reason, like, I don't know how, what, where you're going to be doing damage with, this deck doesn't really just do damage, but um, if you de-evolve them and they uh, and they die from it, and your Gengar's in the active, they go straight to the Lost Zone. So good there. Uh, thing number two that it does is that it puts more cards into their hand, and it's not just putting any cards, it's putting the important ones. So it's putting their Clay Doll back, it's putting their main attacker back, it's putting all those back so that you can hurl into darkness. That's what makes this combo also good. And the only, like I said, the only reason I play it is because I already played these Mysterious Fossils. I didn't decide to play these on their own. So you can drop them if you find them not working, but it's just another tool that you can use to get the combo out um, to hurl all of the impo important Pokemon in their deck into the Lost Zone. So that is all of the Pokemon in the deck. It's quite a few. Uh, the supporter line is going to be kind of bland. There isn't a lot of like unique cards in here that aren't in other decks. Um, so we're just going to quickly go over it. AZ is in not um, not Brimies because you play two EXs. So, you know, if you played less EXs, you'd play Brimies. Uh, Copycat Shuffle Draw, Colorsage Shuffle Draw. You have Baby Search to search out Pokemon. Looker's Investigation is actually pretty good in this deck because you can look at their hand, and if they don't have any Pokemon in their hand, you can choose for them to shuffle and draw five, and hopefully you can hit one off a Hurl. It's kind of a, a desperation Hurl if you don't have any of the other combos. Um between the Omastar or the Crawdon. If you don't have any of those online, Lokers is another way to get them to shuffle drop. Um, and, and it works differently than like N and Rockets, where you're kind of just like guessing if they have a Pokemon in their hand and hoping they shuffle draw into one. With Lokers, if you see a Pokemon in their hand, you can be like, whoa, whoa, whoa you're not shuffle drawing, I'm shuffle drawing. Um, so that's what makes Lokers uh, better in this deck. Uh, Karina, staple. Hex Maniac, staple. Marley's Request, another staple, good recovery card. Uh, the best recovery card in the game, Lysander's Trump card. You have Lysander as staple, Oracle staple. Here are your Anna Rockets M, and as I mentioned before, it's a shuffle draw for your opponent. So hopefully, the, in the early stages of the game, you can shuffle draw Pokemon to their hand so you can hurl them away. Uh, Pokemon Collector, Pokemon Juniper and Sycamore, both staples. Shuffle draw on Oak, uh, Roseanne's Research, Skyla staple, uh, Teammates, Twins, and Wally. 
very, very standard looking supporter line. The only supporter that I would consider adding in um, on top of this is a Scott, because a, so a Scott can search out your Lost World. And that can be difficult sometimes, finding your Lost World. So having a dedicated supporter that says search your deck for Lost World is really nice. Um, if not, you have to end up using your Skyla or your Karina to grab a computer search to grab your Lost World, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just with Scott, it's a little bit more direct, you know? Um, late game, you're not, probably not going to be using your Scott so that your Lapras can search for their Scott, but um, it just opens up other venues. But I just, you know, Scott's only, like, needed part of the time. So um, just something to consider, uh, having a dedicated supporter that says search a deck for a um, stadium card. It's kind of nice to have. So, just a thought. Uh, going to the items, you're going to notice that we play all three Blaine's quizzes, and that's going to be kind of confusing at first, because you're going to be like, whoa, why play all three? Why aren't you just playing, like, the good one, Blaine's quiz three? Or why are you, like, what's going on? Well, if you, if they, if your opponent guesses the quiz wrong, you get to draw two or three cards, which is awesome. But if they get the <coughs> quiz right, they get to draw two cards. And what that does is that increases their chances of drawing into a Pokemon. That's scary, right? Like, so then they're in this weird situation where they're like, oh, am I just going to let him draw the cards and just guess something kind of random and ridiculous so I don't risk drawing? Like, if they see a Gengar Prime on your bench ready to go and you don't have Pokemon in your hand, you're going to be like, oh, crap. He's either going to draw cards to get set up more, or I'm going to draw cards and risk drawing into a Pokemon. So that's where I play all three of them. Um, fun, little, fun little combo there. Uh, Captivating Pokepuff is, is good in this deck. It also has Erica's Perfume. These both have the same effect. It's look at your opponent's hand and bench all of their um, basic Pokemon to their bench. You might be thinking, well, that's kind of productive um, for uh, Crawdon and stuff like that. But it allows you to look at their hand, and you can always just Crawdon the Pokemon back. Uh, let's say that you Erica's Perfume out a Dunsparce. And you're like, ooh, I never wanted to hurl the Dunsparce. Well, you can put the Dunsparce down, then they have enough so you can activate Crawdon's ability and pick the Pokemon that you want to go back to their hand. Um, so that's why you play both of these, because players might hold on to their Pokemon. Uh, it's a similar idea to playing... I'm shuffling through these cards here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Uh, Poke Flute and Target Whistle. Uh, Poke Whistle and Target Float. Flute. Flute. <laughs> Um, but basically what this does is it's the same thing, but they're discarded pile. So it guarantees you to activate Cronaut, it guarantees you to activate Palkia later on in the game. So these four cards are very, very good to, uh, because your opponent's just going to hold on to their Pokemon if they're smart, so this kind of punishes them for holding on to their Pokemon. So, that's why we play those guys. Uh, some other non-standard stuff in here, like I said, you have Clefairy Doll, um, and Robo Sub to kind of hide behind to buffer attacks, because it's all about trading in this deck. You're going to be trading um, uh, trading attacks for lost zone targets and that sort of thing. So anything you can do to uh, not not have your opponent take prizes is going to be great. Uh, this deck would be benefit from a lot of disruption of somehow, like a like a team flare grunt and uh, crushing hammer that sort of thing. Like uh, the other crawdon to the one from Primal Clash uh, to discard energies. Any sort of way to slow them down is good. The only problem behind that is that most decks. Can deal with energy removal anyways because energy removal and super energy removal are in format and they're super busted so um, most decks can deal with that so that's why i don't include it but if you wanted more disruption more disruption could be encouraged uh one other non-stable card that you see in some decks but all of them erica it's you draw three and then you can opponent draw three it's the same thing as blaine's quiz if, if they draw onto a pokemon you can just hurl it away um usually not usually letting your opponent draw cards is not good but in this scenario i'm okay with it uh, we're going to go through some more standard stuff. You have Computer Search, uh, Imposter Professor Oak's Invention, uh, Escape Rope, Junk Arm Item Finder, Luxury Ball, Livery Ball for Search, Pop Out for Recovery, Misty's Wrath to Blow Through Your Deck, Retriever for Recovery, Communication, Oak to Blow Through Your Deck, Stretcher, now you may be saying, whoa, you have um, Retriever and Stretcher, and that's true. It's because you need a lot of combos. So it's the same as like Standard Vespaquin, where if like, you discard, let's say you play like, a 1-1 one -one Octillery in Standard Vespaquin, uh, you play Stretcher so that you can grab back your Artillery if you have to pitch it early, or your Rem Rate if you have to pitch it early. It's the same sort of thing. You're playing a lot of 1-1 one -one lines, so Instant Recovery is going to be better than Shuffle Recovery, generally speaking. So that's why you play both of these, rather than like Super Rod or something like that. Uh, Swoop Teleporter, pretty staple. Scoop Up, staple as well. Versus Seeker, Ultra Ball, and Windstorm, all staple cards. The last card in the item section is going to be a Rare Candy, not Rare Candy and Breeder, because you only play one Stage 1 line. But you still keep, or sorry, sorry, you only play one stage two line. 
you play a 2-1-1 and that's it. So you only ever need the one uh, for the times where you need to get that Gengar right away. Um, and this allows you to teammates for it and do cool plays where you're just having a ghastly set on the bench and go whammo. But 9 times out of 10, you're manually evolving the Gengar up. At least that's what I've found. You don't need to go quick with this. You can cut it. We, I, I started with it out, and then we wanted it in, and then I'm like, oh, this card's just, like, okay. It's a dead card a lot of the times, but um, it still gives you that option, and this deck does have a lot of options to play with. Uh, we're looking at Skyfield, Broken Time Space, and Lost World for your supporters. Broken Time Space, you play so many 1-1 one -one lines, and you just got to get them out quickly. Um, Skyfield, to bait your opponent into playing more cards, or to punish them with target whistles and stuff like that. Um, and also because you play so many 1-1s, one getting those cards down is important. So, play all the stadiums there. Uh, tools, you're going to have three of them. You're going to have Float and Fluffy for maximum mobility here. As well as a Rescue Starf to rescue all of your 1-1 one -one lines. And especially your uh, Gengar when it gets knocked out. Um, I have I thought about playing, like I said, a 2-2-1 two, two, line so that Rescue Scarf can activate and I can evolve the other Haunter that's sitting on my bench. And if you play Experience Share, you can throw that one on the bench one and get... Um, this deck kind of struggles with attachments sometimes, but if you play Experience Share, it'll maximize your Hurl into Darkness um, odds after your first Gengar goes down. Uh, these five cards are in every single deck. Never drop any of them. It's the Elite Four and your Ace spec. And then for energies, we play one rescue, one double rainbow as your specials. Rescue energy, because you play a lot of 1-1 one, one lines, if they get bounced to your hand, it's awesome. Um, like I said, a 2-2-1 two, two, Gengar line and an EXB share would be beneficial in this deck, so you could consider putting that in, trying to find spots for it. Um, and then double rainbow energy um, adds two to Gengar's Hurl into Darkness. Double colorless does not, because it doesn't say amount of energies attached to Gengar, it says the amount of psychic energies. So this does um, add two to that, but not double and not boost doesn't either upper energy doesn't all that stuff doesn't this is the only one that will add actual two to the pearl and then we're going to be playing eight basic psychics i feel like this is enough you're never really attacking with anything except for gengar anyways so a minimal amount of energy is cool uh just to talk shop the deck um now that i'm talking about it if you were to try to find two spots like if you say hey alex your idea of putting in an exp share and another haunter is a good idea what would you take out well, A, I haven't really thought about that that much, but B, let's just go ahead and take a look at what we could drop. You could consider dropping one of these if you really wanted to because you're not trying to rescue the Gengar over and over again. So we'll go ahead and put the stretcher out. Uh, what else is not as important as it is in other decks? Escape rope, maybe not as important. Um, you could consider dropping one of these. You have six uh, walls, right? You have Robo, you have Kofari, and the four... Um, boo, 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 mysterious fossils. So you could drop those. So you have that option, that option, one of these options. Let's just say it's the Robo. You need all those for. Blaine's quiz are super good in this deck. The, all the supporters are very, very standard. So, you know, there's no real reason to drop any of these guys because they're in almost every. Lookers is super good in the deck. Um, and I would say that it buried fossil you could consider cutting just because you have so many mysterious fossils, anyways. The uh, rest of this is all pretty solid, so those would be your four options if you're looking for extra cards to drop um, to add that experience share in the second Haunter. Um, I don't know what Haunter you would play. I could look it up real quick, but there's probably another good Haunter that you can play that does some cool effect. Um, probably the Haunter from uh, Breakthrough is good because when you evolve, you confuse them, so it's extra stalling if they don't have a way to get out of that confusion. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, maybe I'll do another one before the day ends, but... Uh, who knows? That's the last world. Hope you enjoyed.